he did. He gets it to Henry. Hey everyone, welcome back to Great Sports Debates. We're starting on week 8 NFL predictions. Let's jump right into it with Thursday Night Football. Now, some of these games, you know, pretty spot on like usual. But there's a few of these I'm way off. So, remember, I haven't looked at the injury reports yet. And I'm placing some bets tomorrow. So, some of this might not be up to par if we're missing a transaction or something. But this first game I do feel is a little off. The Vikings are only a three-point favorite. I get it, they're on the road, but L.A. isn't much of a home field advantage. We know the Rams can score, and they have uh, Cooper Cup coming back. But this is his first week back, and I think the bigger problem for the Rams is all the offensive linemen they're missing, although I know they did get one tackle back last week. Still, I think the Vikings have went from an overrated team to maybe underrated. The offense is still good. You know, Sam Darnold was overplaying what he is initially, but he can still be good behind a solid offensive line with a strong running game. He's got JJ to throw to, and they got a solid defense. I like the Vikings winning by a touchdown or so, so I feel like this is a pretty solid bet, and I feel like the over-under number's right on. Next up in a game nobody wants to see, we got the Jets at the Patriots. I got the score at 20 to 15, but with the Jets being favored by seven, I don't like the Patriots plus any amount of points. Especially after last week, we thought they might be able to cover against Jacksonville, and we saw how that went. Plus, we know even though Aaron Rodgers has been a lot more turnover prone than any point in his career, he can still turn it on, and I feel like he's going to get a lot of chances against the Patriots. So. 2015 is probably best case scenario for the Patriots. I mean, if the Jets blow this game, they might as well blow the whole thing up. But I do think the Jets can win. This is going to be an avoid for me for obvious reasons. And the number at 41, I'd lean towards under, but again, there's probably better stuff out there. So Green Bay at Jacksonville, this is kind of a tough one. Uh, Jacksonville has been playing better lately but it's still not a team I trust so I'm definitely not going to bet on them you know I initially came up with the score of hey you know Green Bay's rolling maybe they let Jacksonville start off hot at home but anyway I see this I feel like Green Bay wins somewhere three four seven if I had the score like 28 to 24 the line's right at minus four so I would still go with Green Bay here although again this is probably going to be an avoid but, I, I mean, I just feel like Green Bay's too good to lose to Jacksonville. And as far as the number goes, again, I would lean over 49.5, but that's a pretty big number. So, again, probably avoid since this isn't something we feel super strong on. And like I said, there's a few of these that, you know, maybe I have flipped for some reason or maybe we got some value in there that we'll get into in a minute. So Atlanta versus Tampa Bay, at first I had this as like a 60-point game. And I still feel like the number is a little low at 46. I get that both of the Buccaneers starting wide receivers are out. So that makes this whole thing questionable. And again, probably a game I would avoid. I do like the Falcons minus 2.5, even though they did blow it against the Seahawks last week. If they can't beat Tampa Bay with both their starting wide receivers they're in a lot of trouble but keep in mind both of these teams have scored a lot over the course of the season baltimore at cleveland but i would say this is a virtual guaranteed lock that baltimore wins this game but you know they did lose to the raiders earlier on in the season and you know in the nfl nothing is a lock you know some people will look at it as hey Jameis winston their third string quarterback but to be honest, I can't see Jamison playing any worse than the quarterback play they've had so far. And that's a guy that can get hot. So I definitely don't see that as a negative, although it could be. I see the Ravens winning here big. The offense has been inept. Again, you know, Winston could be a spark, but either way, 
Baltimore wins this game. I feel like they're going to score a lot of points. The number is nine, so kind of scary. Maybe an alternate line play or maybe an avoid altogether. And I don't see anything special with the number at 44 and a half. All right, Tennessee at Detroit. Minus 11 is a huge number. I would definitely lean that way. I think they cover. I just hate really big numbers because sometimes you get garbage points or a team lets off the gas. Maybe you look at a first half spread and see where it is there. But I definitely like the Lions to win here. Tennessee doesn't really do a whole lot well. They just traded their top wide receiver out of town. They won one game on the season and a fairly easy schedule. The Lions should win this game easy. Although, you know, JMO is out. I got the Lions winning big here. I'd also consider the over here with the number at 45. I mean, the Lions could wind up scoring that by themselves. So, worth a look. All right, Colts at the Texans. I got the Texans winning by four here. The Lions five. So, probably an avoid. I would definitely lean Houston minus five still. If I had to pick a side here, uh, I do feel like they're the better team. They are at home. They did win the game earlier this season away. Uh, Texans haven't been super strong covering though, so keep that in mind. And the 46 number, I think, is if I bet anything here, you know, not talking about player props yet because we haven't looked at that. But as far as the score and the over under, I, I like the over 46 here best. All right, now I noticed this game has been taken off some places. So I'm definitely going to look at Bengals and Eagles news. I feel like there's something I'm missing here. First off, the Eagles were underdogs. I get that they're away and Cincinnati's been playing good. I don't know if I'd say they've been playing good, but they've been winning because they've been playing bad teams. I think the Eagles should be favored in this game. So that's kind of one that's way off here. So, you know, look at the injury report. Look at what's happening. Like I said, this game got pulled off of a couple of sites too, which is a sign of one of two things. Something's changed or there's a lot of money on one side and, and the books are pulling it. So I like Eagles here. I would even take Eagles money line. I think that they're going to beat the Bengals. I haven't been impressed by the Bengals all year. And, you know, that's usually when they burn you. But the Eagles should be able to run the ball. They should be able to score against the Bengals. The offense is really up and down. I mean, who knows what they're going to do. But it hasn't looked good the last couple of weeks despite the wins. I like Eagles here. But, again, check the injury report and check the news because there's something awful about this game. All right, another one. That is off in my opinion, but I understand why is uh, Cardinals at Miami. I see this as kind of a coin flip. I picked Arizona to win by one. They're three and a half point dogs. This number has been growing. Obviously, this has to do with the return of Tua, which I agree makes Miami better and is probably going to make this an av- well, it's definitely going to make this one an avoid for me. However, we have to remember Miami was not playing that great when Tua was in the starting lineup. So, well, I expect them to prove they weren't playing great before. But this will be a good indicator to see if there's any hope for Miami season. Next, we have uh, Buffalo at the Seahawks. Uh, the over-under there is listed as 35.5, so that's probably wrong. I probably uh, did not add that one in there. But I do like... Buffalo to win. They're favored by three. Probably too close to wager anything on. And members, we'll take a look at that over-under, let you know where we stand there later on. One of my favorite plays this week, we got the Saints and the Chargers. Assuming the Saints are still missing a QB and a couple of wide receivers. And even if some of those guys are back, I feel like 40.5 is a line that's too high for a couple of reasons. After the Saints' early offensive explosion, they've struggled to score. They've struggled to move the ball, and we know they have injuries on offense, and the Chargers have a top-level defense. Chargers like to run the ball, which slows down the game, and have been pretty offensively challenged as well. The line's 7.5 with a low number, which is always a strange one. 
I don't expect the Saints to win this game. I like the Chargers to win. I'm definitely not touching a set. I'm not. I'm not giving away seven and a half with the Chargers against anybody, including the Saints. So that that's a no go for me. But this under, again, check the injury reports. Check any moving news. That that number feels way too high. All right, this is going to be a great game. Probably one I'm going to devote a lot of attention to. Chicago at Washington. These are two teams that are on rapid pace increase, just playing better and better every week. I was very surprised to see Chicago was a two and a half point favorite on the road, but maybe that that's the way things are being bet, and maybe I'm underrating the Bears because they have played better each week. However, this is going to be a whole different test. And what I've seen with Washington, I've honestly just been more impressed with. I think the Bears have a good defense, and Caleb's played better, and he has weapons, and they can be good. But Washington just just looks like they have a higher ceiling in, in Daniel's dual threat abilities and the way they played. I'm pretty sure he's playing in this game. If he's not and it's Mariota, then again, maybe an avoid. But, you know, check your injury report. I like Washington this game. All right, a few more games. We got the Chiefs at the Raiders. This is classic trap game. For some reason, the Raiders every once in a while overplay when they play the Chiefs. It is at home. However, there's no way I'm taking the Raiders with any amount of points against Kansas City. I wanted to put Kansas City scoring up a little higher. I know that they got a new weapon coming. But they just haven't really scored that much this year. I I think this might be the game they get it going. So we got 27-16. Either way, Kansas City should win this game comfortably. And they match up well. But again, we know Kansas City typically has a hard time covering these big numbers. Either way, I would lean Kansas City minus 10. And uh, nothing special with the number, in my opinion. Carolina at Denver. I like Denver minus 10 a lot. Again, you rarely see me taking these these numbers, double-digit number bets, because the NFL teams are so well matched up. But you got to remember a couple things here. Bryce Young, who's already played terrible every game of his career, is coming back in after being benched. We've seen what that offense looked like in that scenario. We've also seen Denver be able to roll up points on teams that can't do anything on offense. So I think 12 points is about best case scenario for Carolina. I mean, granted, you can always get a couple of touchdowns when some things go wrong. But Denver minus 10 is a pretty solid bet in my opinion. Moving on to the Sunday night game. This is going to be a complete avoid for me. I had some people telling me that they really like Dallas plus four here, but you know what? Dallas has just been scary, not good looking to me, and I just don't trust them. We told you, you know, or at least the members, that we bet them under their win total early on in the season because we just didn't like what we saw from Dallas. And we know they won 12 games three years in a row, but this isn't the same team. They definitely can't run the ball the same. And the biggest thing is looking at the injury report. How much are you going to trust the Cowboys if they're still missing half their defense and a lot of key players? So I think San Francisco wins by at least four. But again, that's the team I don't like to trust either. I still have them in my top ten, but they're three and four. They've underperformed. And now, you know, Brock Purdy just coming off a bad game. I ukes out. Probably an avoid. And finally, our Monday night matchup. We got the Giants at the Steelers. This is another one I like. I know it's always scary taking the Steelers minus any amount of points. But I think their offense is going to continue to be a little bit better with Russell Wilson. I kind of liked how they are doing things. And if you think about it outside of a couple of games, the Giants offense has been pretty putrid. And they're going to be playing against a pretty stout Steelers defense. So... Don't expect the Giants to score too much. Uh, The under would be something to consider, although it's a super low number at 36.5, which makes it scary because the Steelers just had an offensive outburst that cost us last week, 
And I could see them doing it again against the Giants because the defense, although the front is pretty strong, you know, you only have so many times when the Steelers are going to get the ball repeatedly after a lot of three and outs. So that's what we got, at least for the games. Members, stay tuned for the props and every bet we make this week. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.